In this video, we'll discuss a couple of new features found in iOS 15.2 Developer Beta 1, and it's headlined by the arrival of the App Privacy Report, which shows how the apps on your iPhone behave. Check it out. I don't know about you all, but I was loving the non-beta life, but of course, Apple released iOS 15.2 Developer Beta 1, and here it is. I already have it running on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Here we go. Software version. You can see iOS 15.2 developer beta one. We'll tap it to reveal the build number 19C5026i for the iPhone. All right. So let's go ahead and show you the first noteworthy feature in developer beta one. And that is a subtle update to the emergency SOS settings panel. And the settings in the descriptions are a little bit more explanatory here in developer beta one for iOS 15.2. So emergency SOS is the feature that allows you to make an emergency call by simply holding the volume and the side button at the same time. Now, the most familiar way to invoke emergency SOS is to use the call withhold function. And that is basically holding the volume button and the side button, but you can also call with five presses of the side button. So Apple has updated the labels for these two buttons. Call with hold is now more descriptive. Previously it was called auto call. And, and now you have the call with five presses being very explicit about what this requires. You could turn off either of these options independently of one another, just like this. So let's test it out using the first call with hold method. And you can see now you get eight seconds instead of five seconds. Just be sure to release the buttons because you don't want to accidentally call emergency services. Now I'm using the five side button press method and you can see you get eight seconds there as well. Let's go ahead and stop that before it makes the call. All right, so that's the updated emergency SOS. Now let's talk about what's most exciting app privacy report. So go to settings, privacy, scroll all the way down, you'll see app privacy report, and then you just simply tap on that. Now app privacy report shows how often apps use the permission you've granted to access your data like location or microphone or media library. It also includes a breakdown of each app's network activity. Now previously the app privacy report was here, but it wasn't presented in a user accessible way. Basically they just provided you with the text file with all the data in that text file. But now you're gonna notice it is really, really nice. So I'm just running a whole bunch of different apps here, just browsing around. And now we're gonna go back to the app privacy report and look how it's been populated with all this data from all the apps that I have on my phone. This is awesome. So from the beginning, you have the ability to export the app privacy report and you could do this previously, like I told you, you can export it to a text file and you can see right there app privacy report and I can just save that to my files and I'm going to open this up and show you guys because this is what you had access to previously just a text file with a whole bunch of data in there the data was there but it wasn't presented in a very digestible way for the average user to figure out but now in iOS 15.2 beta 1 you have all this beautiful data and it's very digestible. You can see your data and sensor access for all the apps. So you can see the TV app here, access the media library just a minute ago. Well, a minute relative to when I filmed this video, of course. And then the weather app, access the location. So this really gives you super granular access details for all the apps on your phone. So really you can tell whether an app has been on its best behavior or not. So the FaceTime app needed access to contacts and camera uh, and all these various other applications here. You can see what they've accessed and when they access. And this data is saved for seven days. You can also sort by, so you can sort alphabetically if you wanna do that, or you can sort by the most recent access in TV app two minutes ago, right? So that is super nice. So let's talk about app network activity. So we talked about the sensor data and all the various permissions. Now let's talk about network activity and see what the apps on my iPhone are doing. What domains are they contacting? Well, let's go in here and find out. So let's start with the app store it has 28 requests. You can see all the various domains that the app store 
uh, access there. You can see lots of Apple domains, obviously, right? <laughs> so if you tap show all, you can see all of them. You can see the amount of times they've requested access to those domains, and you can see the actual domain name. And then you can also see apps that contacted this domain. So if you have multiple apps there, it could be indicative that the domain is combining your activity into a profile to track you. So previously we needed a third party application to access this type of granular data to really see what was going on on the iPhone. But now this is built right into iOS. Uh, so you can see here, accessing the app trailers. No big surprise there. Instagram, no big surprise access, accessing the uh, Facebook graph. Now, to be fair, it's important to note that just because an app appears here doesn't mean that there's anything malicious going on. For instance, NetNewsWire, this is a feed reading app, right? So obviously you're gonna have access to all sorts of domains because these are all the domains for the RSS feeds that I subscribe to, right? So 9to5Mac, uh, Stratechery, et cetera. Here's something interesting though. When you see the little dot, that means that domains have been contacted by other content within that app. So not the app itself, but other content within the app. Just something to keep in mind. Now you also have website network activity. So I went to lensrentals.com and you can view all the domains contacted by that individual website. So, so again, giving you a very low level view of what's going on with not only the apps you use, but the websites you visit on your iPhone. And there's also a list of the most contacted domains. No surprise that an Apple domain is at the top here. So this is a nice feature just to see uh, all the apps that have contacted that particular domain. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 15.2 beta one with app privacy report. Now here's something to keep in mind. If you turn off app privacy report, all of the privacy data that it's collected here will be purged and then it'll start over fresh when you turn it back on. So if you wanna save that data, you're gonna to wanna to export using the share button in the upper right hand corner. But as you can see, any existing info on app activity will be immediately deleted and you can start recording app activity again, just simply by turning on the app privacy report. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about iOS 15.2 developer beta one? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as always, if you appreciated this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for many more videos coming down the pipeline. Thanks again for watching. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.